topic for today's discussion is uh, equilibrium of a rigid body. So hereafter mostly our focus is going to be on uh, rigid bodies and uh, well we had seen that uh, uh, rigid, there are the forces acting on rigid bodies can be divided into two groups one external forces external forces this we generally call it as a force ext or internal forces this we were uh, we have been denoting it as force internal we had seen that uh, these internal forces usually do not contribute uh, either they do not contribute for they do not contribute either for rotation either for translation or rotation this we had seen so uh, unless otherwise we specify most of the forces what we are going to consider are external forces so we will simply denote it by f vector and uh, now remember we have had so far we have uh, dp by dt rate of change of momentum is equal to force and we also have and we also have uh, and the rate of change of angular momentum is what we call it as torque which is responsible for the rotational motion of the object so whenever a body is subjected to force then uh, there is going to be a momentum or acceleration translational motion is possible and uh, due to torque you will have the rotational motion now we have the concept of uh, under what conditions the system is in mechanical equilibrium mechanical equilibrium there are different kinds uh, a body may be under uh, different kinds of equilibria uh, there is something else called thermodynamic equilibrium chemical equilibrium right now we are concerned about the concept of mechanical equilibrium so what is this concept this is like this if linear momentum is a constant of motion this is that uh, linear momentum is a constant of motion that means linear momentum is conserved it is not changing <clears throat> then in that case what happens on the other hand if um, the angular momentum is a constant of motion we'll ditto here it's a constant of motion then what can we have and uh, so what happens in this case this implies the sum of all the forces acting on the body there may be several forces force is a vector so sigma over i1 is equal to n say this becomes zero so for mechanical equilibrium system of all forces acting on the body must be equal to zero this is what you call it as uh, uh, the translational equilibrium so this is what you call it as this term terminology translational equilibrium okay the next is uh, if uh, tau is zero uh, maybe i'll write it here if l is a constant of motion then this implies so various torques acting on the system depending on how many of them this is equal to zero this is what you call it as rotational equilibrium
Okay. So, what is the meaning of the first equation? The meaning of first equation is, I will write it here. Meaning of first equation is, remember it is a vector equation. Therefore, uh, the sum of all the x component of all the forces is equal to 0. So, if Fi is the ith force, the x component, and I am summing over all the forces, this is equal to 0. Similarly, all the y components is equal to 0, and all the z components is equal to 0. Now, what this means is, that torque is a vector, again, sum of all the x components of the torques over all, for, all the torques acting is 0 and uh, sum of all the y components of torques is equal to 0 and sum of all the z components of torques. And here I am writing in component notation these two equations. These two equations are in component notation. Therefore, there is no need to write vectors. We should not write. Suppose we have coplanar forces essentially, a special situation. Uh, coplanar for case of coplanar forces. And let us say that uh, the system is under equilibrium, it is some say essentially like a two-dimensional problem, essentially a 2D problem. Two-dimensional means all the forces are acting on let us say x, o, y plane and then what happens? For the translational equilibrium, f i is equal to 0. This means two conditions. What is it? Essentially, uh, what is it? Uh, sum of the x components is equal to 0 and sum of y components of the forces is equal to 0. So, this is essentially two conditions. And, um, and you need to look for a direction which is perpendicular to this 2D plane. There is no rotational motion about an axis. Therefore, tau, there is going to be only tau uh, about an axis. tau about an axis perpendicular to perpendicular to f1 <coughs> f1 and f2 vanishes so essentially it is only three conditions essentially Okay, right. Now we will. Uh, <clears throat> now let us say that uh, uh, we consider an important uh, case. Suppose some of all the torques are acting on this body, uh, they vanish. Now you may say that um, I am going to calculate these torques with respect to some other origin. Is it possible that uh, the uh, body will have rotational motion? The answer is no. The reason is, uh, we will see that how. I uh, will consider, I have sum of uh, tau i is equal to the 0. This is for, I will call it as rotational equilibria Rg. Yeah. Right? Is it going to remain valid? Is it remain, does it remain valid? Does it remain valid? Does it remain valid if I if the origin is changed? If the origin is changed, you will see that the it is very easy, simple calculation. I have the origin here, and uh, one of the forces. This is the, the power, okay, A, B. The two points here. Remember, it is a uh, it's a couple acting minus f, and on this uh, it will be f 
remember these two have to be parallel I mean these two lines but in opposite directions this is B I will join this this is position vector R1 this OA vector is got position vector R1 similarly OB vector the position vector is uh, R2 so these two forces F and minus F constitute a couple on a rigid body so now let us calculate the moment of the couple moment of the couple this couple is what is the moment of the couple this is R1 crossed with the force crossed with minus F1 then plus this R2 crossed with F uh, actually it is uh, here the force is uh, minus F therefore I should not write this one here simply write minus F and F right this is nothing but this is uh, <coughs> this is uh, uh, what will happen here this is equal to what is um, this quantity this is going to be um, R2 minus R1 crossed with F what is R2 minus R1 from this triangle OAB it will be AB this is equal to AB cross F so this simple calculation shows that when you calculate the moment of a couple that is going to be independent of the origin whatever origin you choose again it is the moment of the couple is AB cross F okay so we can say that uh, uh, this translational uh, equilibrium is uh, independent of the location of the origin and uh, so translational uh, sorry rotational equilibrium or the remember what it is 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 independent of of the location of the origin so if a particular if a body is under uh, rotational equilibrium with respect to a particular coordinate system and then what you do you change the origin and look at it still it will remain the same that is the message and okay now we will consider various cases as possible the first case is like this I will you can treat it as a kind of illustration or uh, I will treat it as an illustration that means explaining the basic concepts I consider a rod a B this is a B here and uh, you have the center here at C this is little a this is little a the distance this is a uniform rod of uniform cross section now you say that there is a F acting and then there is a F acting here so this particular rod is subjected to uh, two forces F here F here is there any now it will induce a torque like this this force will induce a torque in this direction this is going to be anti-clockwise this is the clockwise both of them they cancel therefore tau is equal to zero but the tau is equal to zero means it is under rotational equilibrium sorry so it is under rotational equilibrium and uh, what about sigma of forces total forces is equal to F total sorry is equal to F total F total it is not equal to 0 in fact that is equal to 2F so obviously what will happen this is a case where 
is it under rotational equilibrium yes what about translational equilibrium no it is not under translational equilibrium now we will consider the other case this other case is like this we will consider the same rod and uh, there is a at this end i have a force acting like this there is another force acting like this it's again it's a couple strictly speaking that's the definition I have the center here now only thing i changed reverse the direction of one of the forces in this case what will happen uh, sigma fi is equal to uh, f total is equal to zero they are in opposite direction therefore it vanishes however the sum of torques is is equal to to torque total what is the total torque acting on it so this will with respect to this this will have a torque in this direction it is in the anti clockwise direction it is anti clockwise direction it is two times the torque due to each force so this is not equal to zero therefore what about uh, translational equilibrium of the system uh, it is under translational equilibrium whereas what about the rotational equilibrium of the system no this will rotate and so such a situation is what is known as such a situation where the body does not have translational motion uh, uh, where it is under translational equilibrium however it rotates about a particular point and axis this is what is called as a pure rotation okay we will uh, there was one special case we will see this is what is called as a lever problem common lever which we use this is what is called principle of moments actually this is taught even at a very element, even at an early stage in a school however we shall discuss this from the point of view of translational equilibrium and rotational equilibrium so i have a uh, a simple lever like this what you have is you have a fulcrum this is what you call it as a pivot or fulcrum as it is known and uh, this is subjected to here there is a force this distance is t1 and then this distance is d2 call this point as a call this point as b okay and uh, right now this pivot point you can call it as o about this particular point and now what happens and uh, now this body this whole rod will have a uh, ideally speaking a, uh, a lever should not have any uh, mass so it's of negligible mass so an ideal lever has negligible mass so there is going to be um the two forces are going, one force is acting here another force f2 it will have a moment like this it will induce a moment this will induce a moment like this finally it will be there so generally what you do is this is the load arm this section is known as load arm this portion is known as load load arm this a to o is known as load arm then o to b is known as um, this is a effort term see what you do is you there is a weight here which requires to be lifted or moved 
you have here effort on some force you are going to apply okay now there is um, there is a forces are acting here therefore there will be a reaction at this particular point reaction at the fulcrum reaction of the support at the fulcrum this is a vector quantity so the reaction at the fulcrum at the support reaction of the support at the fulcrum okay so for translational equilibrium for for translational equilibrium what we need this r must be equal to f1 plus f2 now taking moments now there are three forces acting essentially f1 f2 and then the reaction it's also of a force variety now taking moments about uh, this particular point 4 moments about uh, o what do you get here this moment is moment due to f1 is f1 into d f1 into d1 and this is uh, because it is a translation equilibrium now you will see that uh, this is must be equal to f2 into d2 so this is for uh, for rotational equilibrium you have this condition for translation equilibrium you have this condition and so from this you can uh, so this object is not uh, rotating at all it is in equilibrium it is neither rotating like this nor it is rotating like this both these moments are cancelling with each other so from this i have we have f1 by f2 is equal to d2 by d1 and so this is what is known as mechanical advantage the what we want is ideally uh, if um, if f1 is much much larger than f2 let us say then in order to maintain this equilibrium we need to have this distance d2 much much larger that is the idea so d1 is much smaller and this is a common sense experience and okay for battery la ninu padithu waste now we will go into concept of center of gravity evlo time aache 35 okay center of gravity fifty or rupees solunga the concept of center of gravity it is a common experience that uh, you would have seen everybody can do it if you have a notebook or a cardboard it can be uh, held on a at a particular point at a particular point wo one can vertically hold it so that this but uh, this book or uh, cardboard it is balanced okay so the how does this happen so the re, there is a going to be reaction at the tip this reaction at the tip what we call it as r this reaction at the tip is going to balance the um, uh, the total weight the total weight of the book mg of the material of the book or material of the book let us say so the notebook is under translational equilibrium it is under translational equilibrium and not only that it's also under rotational equilibrium why otherwise if there is a, the different forces acting here they can tilt like this or tilt like this it's not happening so so not due to uh, it is not due to unbalanced torque if there is going to be one then it will tilt so what happens is the center of gravity this is now we define what is known as the center of gravity
cg the center of gravity is located such that the total torque on the body center of gravity so located such that the total torque on the body due to the forces let us say that there is a m1 g there is something else m2 g etc so the total torque due to different forces they balance they cancel out and so to, uh, torque is equal to summation over i r i so this is the r1 vector okay that crossed with whatever is the mass at this particular point and acceleration due to gravity that is equal to zero so um what happens is the center of gravity of a body is that point where the total gravitational torque on the body is zero so this is this definition of center of gravity the total gravitational torque acting on the body must be equal to zero and so uh, ri and g are perpendicular to each other therefore essentially you are left with mi ri summation is equal to zero Okay. At this stage, one would think that uh, this is same as the center of mass, but is not. Remember, the center of mass definition is this quantity divided by the total mass. And, however, it it will turn out to be the same if the the origin is the center of mass of the body, right? If origin is going to be the center of mass of the body, then it will turn out to be the same. so what happens is that the center of mass and center of gravity both of them will turn out to be the same if the body is subjected in a uniform gravitational field so center of mass is same to center of gravity in a uniform gravitational field ஜி <coughs> where is one point to point then center of mass and center of gravity do not coincide now uh, how is center of gravity of a body determined and it's a again a very standard one suppose i have a cardboard or something and i want to find the center of gravity so this is a very standard procedure what you do is you suspend it from a particular point a suspend it from a particular point a this point is a so the whole uh, the weight is going to act along this so it will be along this direction now you take some other point b and suspend it again um, then its weight will act along this when you put it this way when you uh, when you fix this whole body about uh, fix it about the point b so similarly you will find that various lines will intersect suppose i have another point c here and do this so this is the center of gravity so this o is the cg of the body okay we will work out an illustration uh we will we'll work out a, a simple problem and it will illustration you can treat it as an example various concepts which are involved in we'll that so i have a rod this end i will call it as a this end i will call it as b so there is a pivot here k1 there is a pivot here k2 
it's obvious that there will be a reaction here this is r1 this is r2 so this will um, i have the cg of the body na pai bri undu keda pirina why it is coming is no more ah okay so this is uh, g the weight we lag down right let us say that this weight is uh, um, weight remember mass times weight is what mass times acceleration due to gravity this is 4 then i have another uh, weight at this particular point p let us say that this is the point p there is a weight w1 this is uh, w1 is q1 to be 6 times g okay now uh, k1 and k2 or pivots or knife edges whichever way you want to take can take there are few dimensions given in the problem i will specify that ab is 70 cm namely the length of the rod the of the rod then ag ag is uh, because this is the center of gravity 35 cm right and ap is given to be 30 cm so obviously pg would be 5 cm okay then uh, we need certain distances uh, what is this ak1 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 is equal to and uh, ak1 is equal to bk2 is the location of uh, knife edges is 10 cm so we know what is k1g and k2g k1g is equal to k2g is equal to so 35 minus 10 is 25 cm right now we have uh it is under uh, uh, translational equilibrium therefore the forces acting upwards r1 and r2 must be equal to forces acting downwards so translational equilibrium implies r1 plus r2 to reactions must be equal to w1 plus w so we can have this so r1 plus r2 is equal to w1 is 6 w is 4 therefore 10 g okay this is one equation then i will label it as 1 now taking moments about uh taking moments about uh, g for rotational equilibrium right now it is going to be in the clockwise whereas this will be in the anti clockwise and w1 with respect uh, we are taking moments with respect to the point g so this will rotate in this direction so minus r1 into what is the distance k1g plus r2 into r2 into k2g ah this plus there is one w1 acting here w1 into pg 
sum of the all the moments is equal to 0. So, we can substitute the numbers. This is 0.25 in meters. K to G is um, um, 0.25 meters. P1G is just 5 centimeters here. P1G is 5 centimeters. Therefore, is 0.05 meters. From this, you will get an equation R1 minus R2 is equal to 1.2 G. Strictly speaking, I should put, if I want to write the uh, uh, units, I should write Newtons here. And some little bit of arithmetic is involved, do it. Now, from these two equations, you can uh, calculate R1 and R2. R1 is equal to, if you add these two equations, 2R1, you will get from the uh, 2R1 2 is equal to 11.2, then R1 would be 54.88 Newtons and R2 is equal to 43.12 Newtons. And, uh, right? And, so, it is very easy to do this kind of problems. All that you need to do is so, all that you need to do with these kind of problems is to write the balancing equations for forces and write the balancing equation for torques, namely translational equilibrium condition and rotational equilibrium condition. When you take, uh, when you write down the rotational equilibrium condition, you need to take torques about a suitable point where your algebra would be simpler. And now, we will consider an illustration, another problem. Now, there are different kinds of problems that are involved which are repeatedly asked in examination. Various things can be asked. One is uh, a ladder problem. And, uh, this I will call it as an illustration or a problem. can treat it as a problem or example. This is what ladder problem. Ladder right now. So, the situation is like this. I have a wall. I have a ladder here. This is a ladder. Ladder is AB. The wall is smooth. The wall is smooth, whereas the floor is rough. I can have this also rough, this also smooth. We will do this. So, this point I will call it as D. The, this is C. Call this point as C. So, the weight will act downwards. M into G. And uh, Now, what are the various forces acting? That is what first we should uh, uh, sketch very clearly, indicate very clearly, then indicate the directions of torques also very clearly. Now, because the wall is smooth, there is going to be a reaction here. This I will call it as N2. I need to have a little longer one for reasons you will realize why this is N2. Then, because it is rough here, what happens is, you have here a, a frictional force, F, and this is what is going to be the normal reaction of the floor on the foot of the ladder. Now, these two forces can be co uh, combined into one, I mean I need to, I am not indicating it uh, very uh, clearly. So, this is going to be the F. This particular one is what is going to be the F. This is F. 
now when uh, for equilibrium when i produce this when this force is produced they must meet at a particular point not a bad diagram and this point i will call it as o why should they meet there in that case what happens if they if they don't meet what will happen because they uh, if they meet what will happen is all the torques about this particular point will be zero therefore it will be under really uh, rotational equilibrium and it's also under we will see this okay ab length of ab is l right and we will call this angle as theta which angle the, the angle made by the ladder with the floor as theta right so what is f sir actually f is nothing but the reaction of reaction of the floor reaction of the floor on the foot of the ladder okay now let us work out uh, it is under <coughs> it is under uh, uh, translational equilibrium and also under rotational equilibrium so translational equilibrium implies sigma of all the forces is equal to zero what are the forces acting sir the um, we will have it as uh, we can have uh, there are two kinds of forces one along horizontal direction one along vertical direction therefore we will have it as two equations and uh, sum of all fy is equal to zero f of x is equal to zero implies is equal to uh, there are only two forces uh, the ho forces along the horizontal direction n2 is one force it is acting at a there is another force namely the frictional force f which is acting at b therefore f is equal to n2 what about the forces acting along y direction only two one is the weight of the uh, ladder which is acting at the center of gravity and the reaction at this particular point this implies n1 is equal to mg two important equations we have got all that we have done is to make use of translational equilibrium nothing more now rotational equilibrium so sum of all the torques this must be equal to zero uh about which point i would like to calculate and i would like to calculate net torques about b and so i will say that uh, net torques about the point b you can choose any point you want earlier we already seen it and then what will happen then this will rotate in this uh, the weight of the body will rotate in this direction in the clockwise direction whereas this n2 will uh, uh, rotate it in the counter clockwise uh, anti clockwise direction so mg into mg into the foot of the perpendicular from this particular point that will be equal to what this length will be ah uh, l by 2 this whole length is l by 2 this is l by 2 into cos theta minus n2 into n2 into ah uh, what did i do i should drop the perpendicular to this that would be whole thing into sin theta this length into sin theta into sin theta l sin theta is equal to 0 so i will have n2 is equal, i will cancel this n2 is equal to i know it is already equal to f here that will be equal to mg into 
cot theta by 2. Now, I know what is n1, I know what is n2, therefore, I can calculate what is the uh, total force. F is same as n2, therefore, total force, what is the total force? Actually, it is the reaction of the floor on the foot of the ladder. This will be equal to square root of, ah, as from this particular figure, this particular figure, I have here n1 squared plus f squared. This is same as square root of n1 squared plus n2 squared. This is equal to n1 squared is mg squared 1 plus cot square theta by 4. So, this is nothing but mg into square root of 4 plus cot square theta divided by 2. This is the magnitude of the force. You can also do a little bit of calculation to what is the direction of the force. The direction of the force is given by what? Suppose this is going to meet uh, at this particular point, I need to give some name. So, the direction of the force, the direction of the reaction, right? Direction of the reaction of the floor. Reaction R is given by this angle uh, O B E. That can also be calculated from little bit of geometry and uh, now we will uh, we will consider one more example. Now this is again a uh, one of the typical problems is ladder problem. Another typical problem is uh, what we call it as um, you keep a heavy block on an inclined plane. This kind of problems are called as uh, inclined plane. We will call inclined plane. And uh, uh, I will sorry, I would call it as block or blocks placed on on inclined plane. This is another typical problem. Let me, I am not going to write down the problem, but I will describe the physics of it. Physics of it is like, like this. I have an inclined plane. This is theta and I have a block which is placed on it. H is the height of the block and uh, so called length of the block or a side of a block is B. Okay, the, the weight will act from the, uh, uh, through the center of gravity, this will be mg, this is, uh, maybe I will produce it a little bit, and um, this can be resolved along two directions, this is uh, mg cos theta, and this will be mg sin theta. This is mg into the sin theta. Okay. Uh, one near, uh, <coughs> now, when the, let us say that, uh, suppose this particular uh, inclined plane, you can rotate about this uh, bow, let me say. Then, the pl this plane, this particular top portion will coincide like this. Then the block is placed on this. Now I can rotate it, let us say that. I can rotate the inclined plane. That means the angle theta can be increased. When the block is on the floor, mg will act downwards. The reaction will also act, the normal reaction will be here. Okay. Now if I keep rotating, what will happen? 
ada this uh, there is a situation when this block can topple when the block will topple this normal reaction will no longer act through the center of the cg so normal reaction will be in a some other point this is going to be the direction of normal so as you keep rotating when you reach a particular point let us say um, as you keep rotating this n will move so this distance we will call it as this distance is what x i will produce it so that you will know clearly this distance i will call it as x so the uh, the point of application of n will shift from this line towards this and uh, the body will topple when n exactly coincides with this particular side and okay now this kind of problems can be done this i will call it as uh, um, a this point i will call it as a this point i will call it as b that's all i would need now i will write down the the block has two tendencies one the block can slide down it is the translational motion the block can slide down so one can write down the for translational equilibrium for uh, for translational equilibrium sigma of f must be equal to 0 then rotational equilibrium we don't want this to rot topple therefore sigma of all torques i can take it about a particular point i am going to take it about c this must be equal to c i am going to take torques about this now what about uh, the translational equilibrium what does it mean it means ah uh, it means first horizontal forces what are the various horizontal forces I mean horizontal in the sense horizontal to the side of this block here there is a frictional force f therefore this f must be equal to this this is the only force that is acting along this direction along this direction see mg sin theta therefore f is equal to mg sin theta then n is equal to this n is equal to mg cos theta now what about the torques about um, the c it will be equal to this uh, will have a torque about this point c that is uh, this implies n into x this must be equal to ah uh, and f it is also going to create a torque f into f into perpendicular distance from here h by 2 so from these two equa from these three equations we can discuss when the uh, when the toppling will take place whether the toppling uh, can take place before uh, sliding or sliding can take place without toppling etc so various such uh, situations we will discuss in the problem session thank you